Welcome to the Presbyterian Church in Caddis, Ohio. We believe the Presbyterian Church of Caddis exists to share our faith in Jesus Christ with family, friends, and neighbors through our outreach and mission, worship and spirituality, fellowship, and communication. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church of Caddis. It's beautiful to see all you brave and warm-hearted people today. And we welcome back to our midst Dave Misko, who's been away with health issues. Is that a fair statement? Yes, yeah, so welcome. We're glad to see you. Hope you do well. Hope you continue to recover. Um, note that in the life of the church this week, um, Disciples Bible Study will, will start again on Monday evening. Um, if you haven't started reading your lessons ahead of time, do so because they're long. Um, Tea Time Book Club will meet on Tuesday. And the book we're reading is A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. It's a touching story of an immigrant girl growing up around the turn of the century. Is that fair? Yeah, it's a nice book. Um, so um, anybody's welcome to join us then uh, at two o'clock on Tuesday. Um, note that there are two congregational meetings called um, one on January 14th for the purpose of electing officers and the annual meeting on January 28th. That will be a meeting with a carry-in dinner. And then we'll have our meeting um, about the uh, 2017 state of the church. I think that's all the announcements. Oh, a mission for the month this month is Laughlin Chapel. Laughlin Chapel is a wonderful mission in Wheeling that started um, as a mission of First Presbyterian Church there, and it now is an unfunded mission of our presbytery. Um, they do great, great work um, with the children um, of the Ohio Valley, so please give from your heart to that. Um, it is a thrill for me to see Larry Ludwig here today. I have seen him many times um, in the last few days in the freezing cold up to his ankles in water, and um, thank you for your service to this community. And I hope that you are well and continue to be so. <laughs> um, friends, let us worship God. <clears throat> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And God said that it was good. At the beginning of his ministry, Jesus was baptized by John. The heavens opened and the Spirit descended like a dove. Then God said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Our opening hymn is number 475, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. <clears throat>
A prophet appeared in the wilderness, calling the people to repent, to be baptized, and prepare the way of the Lord. We return to the water to confess our sins, giving thanks for the grace of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the one who has come to save us. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God, God of all glory, you look from heaven and, and see us as we are, not worthy to kneel at your feet, not ready to welcome your way. Forgive us, gracious God, in Christ, stoop down to save us. Loosen the ties that bind us to sin, and set us free to love and serve you. In Jesus' name. Hear the good news of the gospel. As a voice from heaven said to Jesus, so God says to each of us, you are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Having been reconciled to God in Jesus Christ, I invite you to share signs of reconciliation and the peace of Christ. In sharing the peace, we express the reconciliation, unity, and love that come only from God. And we open ourselves to the power of God's love to heal our brokenness and make us agents of that love in the world. Since God in Christ has forgiven us, let us forgive one another. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Okay. She's not touching us. Peace. The Hebrew Testament reading for this morning comes from the first book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Our Psalter reading this morning is found in our hymnal, number 10, and we will sing that together. So if you would please turn to number 10 in the hymnal. Sing glory to the name of God.
Our epistle reading comes this morning from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Together, all together, there were about 12 of them. Gospel today is from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. This is the Sunday that we call Baptism of the Lord Sunday. And this is Mark's version of Jesus being baptized. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed the one who was more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the throng of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. Have any of you ever had a life altering experience? And by that I mean an experience that maybe even while it's taking place, you look around and realize my life will never be the same again. I will never have the same perspective on things. You're grinning. <laughs> the things I go through and the way that I handle things will not be the same. Serious illness oftentimes will cause us to think that way. Great trauma, particularly sexual or violent trauma toward a person, often causes us to think that way. The death of a spouse or a child can sometimes cause us to think that way. Great events like that that cause particular drama and or trauma in our lives can change our whole outlook. But there are other things, I think, that change our outlook on life. I was reading a really good sermon um, where a woman was talking about being a young child who was transitioning into adolescence and she was riding her bike and plopping herself down in a field where she'd look at the clouds and play the game, you know, to try to talk about what the clouds look like. And at one point it occurred to her that she was going to, she was about to become too old to do that. And she realized that her life would change forever when that change of life happened. I am told, although I don't know, 
I've kind of seen it with my brothers, that there comes a time in most boys or young men's lives where they realize that they are bigger and stronger than their dads. It's kind of like, I can take my dad now. And in an era when dads used to be the people who would just kind of lord over you, that created great life changes for, for some men to be able to see their dads in that way. So there are lots of ways, perhaps, that our lives change with a particular event. And I think that this is one of those types of events for Jesus. What happens with Jesus is he goes to his cousin, John, and is baptized. And we have to pay very close attention to one word in this story. Because Matthew and Luke don't use this word. Matthew and Luke say that the doors of heaven are opened when Jesus is baptized. Opened. If you open a door very neatly, you can close it back up again very neatly. To open something is for it to have a very clear edge and for it to be able to be shut again. Mark doesn't say that. Mark says the heavens are rend apart, are torn apart, are It's not clean when something is torn apart. It can't be put together exactly the way that it was again. The heavens are opened up in a way that they won't be neatly clean again, neatly closed again. And that is the glory of the way that Mark tells the story because Mark wants us to understand that the heavens have been torn apart through Jesus' baptism because the Holy Spirit has come to us and God the Father has said, this is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. The heavens torn apart in a way that they can't be closed up means that we now have access to God the Father because of the beloved Son. I mean, thinking about this makes me think, how, how could Matthew and Mark miss this? It's the most incredible, incredible thing that Jesus has done. And yes, this is chapter one of Mark, and Jesus will do lots of other things like heal and, and teach, preach, and ultimately die and rise again to make the heavens more real to the people that he meets and all the people who believe. But we now have access to the very heavens, to the very God who created the universe because Jesus, through God the Father, has rend open, has torn open the heavens, and life will never be the same again. Thanks be to God. you'd like to stand and say the words we believe, the, the affirmation of faith today comes from the brief statement of faith. In life and death, and death we, belong we belong to God. God. Through, Through the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, the love of, love of God, and, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, Spirit we, we trust in the one triune God, God, the, God the, the Holy One of Israel, Israel in whom alone we worship and serve. We, we trust, trust in Jesus Christ, Christ fully human, human, fully God. Jesus, Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, 
preaching good news to the poor, and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed, and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating without cast, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe in the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of the human pain, and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, and delivering us from the death to the life eternal. Our meditation hymn is number 164, Down Galilee's Slow Roadways. Thank you. Please be seated. As we come together as a community of faith in prayer, please note that we have received word that Helen Bass Smith, who herself has been having some health problems, has a little brother, if you'll remember. Her little brother is 95 and he has apparently passed away. So um, I think Helen will probably be pretty devastated by that. Um, so please keep Helen in your prayers. I also have a text this morning from TJ Miser, who is asking for prayers for his father, Tom. Um, TJ says, I was at the hospital all night, and finally, after many x-rays and tests, they diagnosed him with influenza A. Um, very sick and very contagious. For those of you who have never had influenza A, um, one of the ways they diagnose you with it is that they'll say to you, do you feel as sick as you've ever been in your life? And if you say yes, then they test you for influenza A because that's how miserable it makes you. So um, please keep Tom in your prayers. Um, are there other joys or concerns that we have this day that we need to be aware of? Safe travels. All righty. Ray Zitko for continued healing. Pray for, Ed Ross, uh, husband of 
pray for Ed Ross, who's having surgery. It's going to warm up this week. Yeah, it's going to get all the way to 20, Larry. I just told Becky Jones. Mm -hmm. What that means, Larry, is that the stuff around your ankles isn't going to be water, it's going to be slush now. <laughs> Anything else today? Very good. Well, dear ones, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this day and for the glory of your creation. We thank you for warmer weather that is coming. And we pray deep and sincere prayers for all those who have to be out in this working, no matter what they're doing. We pray for their safety and for their well-being. And Lord, we thank you this day for Jesus, your son, who came into the world to open up the heavens to us, tear them apart so that life would never again be the same for the access that we have to you. We thank you for prayer where we can talk to you directly. We thank you for the ability and the opportunity to tell you our heart's desires. May we take advantage of the great gift that Jesus has brought us. Lord, we pray this day for the homeless poor and for animals who are out in the cold without proper shelter and food. We pray for the children of our world that they might grow and thrive and flourish. We pray for those who we have named this day, for Ray, for Tom, for Helen, and for Ed. We ask your healing presence be with them. We pray too for safe travels for all those who come, come, are coming and going. And Lord, we ask that you bless your church in this place. we be filled with your Holy Spirit, that we carry your light out into the world so that all might know you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray as he taught, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The earth belongs to God, our Creator. Every good thing is a gift from the Lord. Let us glorify God through the gifts of our lives. The morning offering will be received.
Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O God, God, for for every blessing and and spiritual spiritual gift gift you you have poured poured out out to us. us. Let Let the gifts of our lives be a source of blessing in your world, all all to the the glory of your your holy name. name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of mercy and might. In your wisdom you made all things and sustained them by your power. You have called forth men and women in every age to be your servants and speak your word. And when we rebelled against your call and turned from your ways, in your love you called us back to you. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You sent prophets to call us to justice and compassion. And therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven, with the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the high. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. Baptized in Jordan's waters, Jesus took his place with sinners, and your voice proclaimed him your beloved. Your spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and to restore sight to the blind, to free the oppressed. He lived among us in power and grace, touching broken lives with your healing. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and made with us new covenant by water and the Spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this cup and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we wait, await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine that we break, the bread we break and the cup we bless. May be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. God, you once claimed us by the Spirit's waters and number us among your own beloved. Give us power to do your work, to show your love, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We give thanks that on the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, he took the cup. And he said to them, this represents my blood shed for you. And a new covenant is made, sealed in my shed blood. So whenever you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. For every time you eat this bread and drink of this cup, 
do so, remembering me until I come again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bread of life, take and eat.
the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we thank you for this meal shared with fellow believers and that you have been truly present here with us in this bread and in this cup. Bless our service to you as we go out into the world as your people, changed and renewed in the spirit you offer. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 296, Go in Grace and Make Disciples. And as you go from here, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.